Hu Shi Chinese, Hu Shi the 17th of December 1891 to the 24th of February 1962 was a Chinese philosopher, essayist and diplomat. Hu is widely recognized today as a key contributor to Chinese liberalism and language reform in his advocacy for the use of written vernacular Chinese. He was influential in the May Fourth Movement, one of the leaders of China's New Culture Movement, was a president of Peking University, and in 1939 was nominated for a Nobel Prize in Literature. He had a wide range of interests such as literature, history, textual criticism, and pedagogy. He was also an influential Redology scholar and held the famous Joshu Manuscript, Joshu Ben Joshu Ben for many years until his death. Biography Hu was born in Shanghai, China to Hu Chuan, Hu Chuan, Hu Chuan and Feng Shundi, Feng Shundi, Feng Shundi, with ancestry from Jishi County in Anhui Province. Family legend has it that Hu Shi's ancestors were descended from the last teenage emperor of Tang China being different in origin from the rest of the Hu clan, who fled in disguise with a loyal minister of court in 907 to Anhui and eventually took the name as his son. In January 1904, his family arranged his marriage to Chang Tung Shu, Zhang Dong Shu, Zhang Dong Shou, an illiterate girl with bound feet who was one year older than he was. The marriage took place in December 1917. Hu received his fundamental education in Jishi in Shanghai. Hu became a national scholar through funds appropriated from the Boxer Indemnity Scholarship Program. On 16 August 1910, he was sent to study agriculture at Cornell University in the U.S. In 1912 he changed his major to philosophy and literature. After receiving his undergraduate degree, he went to study philosophy at Columbia University, where he was greatly influenced by his professor, John Dewey. Who became Dewey's translator and a lifelong advocate of pragmatic evolutionary change, helping Dewey in his 1919-1921 lectures series in China. He returned to lecture in Peking University. During his tenure there, he received support from Chen Dushou, editor of the influential journal New Youth, quickly gaining much attention and influence. Hu soon became one of the leading and influential intellectuals during the May Fourth Movement and later the New Culture Movement. He quit New Youth in the 1920s and published several political newspapers and journals with his friends. His most important contribution was the promotion of vernacular Chinese in literature to replace classical Chinese, which ideally made it easier for the ordinary person to read. The significance of this for Chinese culture was great. As John Fairbank put it, the tyranny of the classics had been broken. Hu devoted a great deal of energy, however, to rooting his linguistic reforms in China's traditional culture rather than relying on imports from the West. As his biographer Jerome Greeter put it, whose approach to China's distinctive civilization was thoroughly critical but by no means contemptuous. For instance, he made a major contribution to the textual study of the Chinese classical novel, especially the 18th century novel Dream of the Red Chamber, as a way of establishing the vocabulary for a modern standardized language. His Peking University colleague Wen Yuan Ning dubbed Hu a philosophy for his wide-ranging humanistic interests and expertise. Hu was the rock ambassador to the U.S. between 1938 and 1942. He was recalled in September 1942 and was replaced by Wei Daoming. Hu then served as Chancellor of Peking University, then called National Peking University between 1946 and 1948. In 1957, he became the third president of the Academia Sinica in Taipei, where he remained until his death. He was also chief executive of the Free China Journal, which was eventually shut down for criticizing Chiang Kai-shek. He died of a heart attack in Nankang, Taipei at the age of 70, and was entombed in Hu Shi Park, adjacent to the Academia Sinica campus. That December, Hu Shi Memorial Hall was established in his memory. It is an affiliate of the Institute of Modern History at the Academia Sinica, and includes a museum, his residence, and the park. Hu Shi Memorial Hall offers audio tour guides in Chinese and English for visitors. Hu Shi's work fell into disrepute in mainland China until a 1986 article, written by Ji Xinlin, A Few Words for Hu Shi, advocated acknowledging not only Hu Shi's mistakes, but also his contributions to modern Chinese literature. 
His article was sufficiently convincing to many scholars that it caused a re-evaluation of the development of modern Chinese literature and the role of Hu Shi. Selection 15 of the Patangwa Proficiency Test is a story about Hu Shi debating the merits of written vernacular Chinese over classical Chinese. Pragmatism <inaudible> 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 During the warlord era in the Republic of China, unlike other fellow intellectuals such as Liang Qichao and Chen Dushou, Hu was a staunch supporter of pragmatism. Hu Shi himself translated it into Chinese as simplified Chinese, Shi Yan Zhu Yi traditional Chinese, Shi Yan Zhu Yi pinyin, Shi Yan Zhu Yi experimentalism, since he strived to study both academic and social problems in the scientific approach in the general sense, and advocated cultural reform under the guidance of pragmatism. The second translation is simplified Chinese, Shi Yang Zhu Yi traditional Chinese, Shi Yang Zhu Yi pinyin, Shi Yang Zhu Yi was crafted long after pragmatism became popular in China at that time due to Hu's endeavor. This secondary translation has become dominant today, but the intention of such terminology substitution was highly suspected to politically defame Hu for the term Shi Yang had been evolved into a derogatory sense. Topic. Writings Hu was well known as the primary advocate for the literary revolution of the era, a movement which aimed to replace scholarly classical Chinese in writing with the vernacular spoken language, and to cultivate and stimulate new forms of literature. In an article originally published in New Youth in January 1917 titled, A Preliminary Discussion of Literature Reform, Hu originally emphasized eight guidelines that all Chinese writers should take to heart in writing. Write with substance. By this, who meant that literature should contain real feeling and human thought. This was intended to be a contrast to the recent poetry with rhymes and phrases that who saw as being empty. Do not imitate the ancients. Literature should not be written in the styles of long ago, but rather in the modern style of the present era. Respect grammar. Who did not elaborate at length on this point, merely stating that some recent forms of poetry had neglected proper grammar. Reject melancholy. Recent young authors often chose grave pen names, and wrote on such topics as death. Who rejected this way of thinking as being unproductive in solving modern problems? Eliminate old clichés. The Chinese language has always had numerous four-character sayings and phrases used to describe events. Who implored writers to use their own words in descriptions, and deplored those who did not? Do not use illusions. By this, Hu was referring to the practice of comparing present events with historical events even when there is no meaningful analogy. Do not use couplets or parallelism. Though these forms had been pursued by earlier writers, Hu believed that modern writers first needed to learn the basics of substance and quality, before returning to these matters of subtlety and delicacy. Do not avoid popular expressions or popular forms of characters. This rule, perhaps the most well-known, ties in directly with Hu's belief that modern literature should be written in the vernacular, rather than in classical Chinese. He believed that this practice had historical precedence, and led to greater understanding of important texts. In April of 1918, Hu published a second article in New Youth, this one titled, Constructive Literary Revolution, A Literature of National Speech. In it, he simplified the original eight points into just four. Speak only when you have something to say. This is analogous to the first point above. Speak what you want to say and say it in the way you want to say it. This combines points 2 through 6 above. Speak what is your own and not that of someone else. This is a rewording of point 7. Speak in the language of the time in which you live. This refers again to the replacement of classical Chinese with the vernacular language. The following excerpt is from a poem titled Dream and Poetry, written in vernacular Chinese by Hu. It illustrates how he applied those guidelines to his own work. Topic. See also Modern Chinese poetry Topic. Footnotes Topic. References Topic. Further reading Chinese Writers on Writing featuring Hu Shi. Ed. Arthur Z. Trinity University Press, 2010. Dr. Hu Shi, A Philosophy. By Wen Yuan Ning. 
Imperfect Understanding, Intimate Portraits of Modern Chinese Celebrities. Edited by Christopher Ray, Amherst, N.Y., Cambria Press, 2018, pp. 41–44. External links The Chinese Renaissance. A series of lectures Hu Xi delivered at the University of Chicago in the summer of 1933. See print reference listed above. Hu Xi Study. At Nuconcept. Com in Chinese.